Hey guys, Colleen here, DIYer behind LemonThistle.com, and today I am excited to talk all about hand lettering on fabric or transferring your hand lettering onto fabric for DIY projects, home decor, the works. So I'm going to be testing out a few different methods, demonstrate them for you in these projects here, and kind of go over the pros and cons of each. I'm also going to chat briefly about lettering on felt or materials that fray really easily. Over the years, I've done a lot of different DIY projects that involve hand lettering on fabric, and I get quite a few questions about it, at least a couple of questions every month, and these are old posts. So I thought that I would round it all up in one really easy resource of a video here, demonstrate all the different methods, talk about the pros and cons, and hopefully answer any questions that you might have about hand lettering on fabric. So before we get into it, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would so love if you did that below so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. All right, so there's a few different ways that I'm going to test out using paint with a paint marker, a paint brush, uh, this pointed tip for the paint bottles, which is one of my favorite ways. And then I also want to talk about the difference between the fabric paint and just a regular acrylic multi-surface paint. I also wanna look at tracing versus freehand and or sketching it onto your fabric. All right, so the first thing that I wanna point out is that it's always a good idea to put a backer board or a piece of card in between your fabric or underneath your fabric because the paint will go through the fabric. The only time that this isn't really an issue is if you're lettering on something like drop cloth. So here I've put a piece of cardstock in the tote that I'm lettering. So in this first example, I am using a paint pen. It is important to choose an acrylic paint pen. It works really well on a smoother fabric like this. It probably wouldn't work great on something like a drop cloth or felt because it would fray the marker and it would fray the felt or pick up lots of fluff on the felt. That said, for something like this, it works pretty well. The biggest challenge is holding the fabric tight enough that you can get smooth lines. So it's nice to have that cardstock in there, not only so that it protects the back layer from getting paint on it, but also so that you can use it to activate your paint marker when you wanna get a little bit more paint flowing. So this one I just freehanded. You can see how that turned out there. And you can see the paint did soak through to the cardstock in between, but it protected the back of the bag. I will note that the paint pen is kind of thin though in that it doesn't necessarily look hand painted with that thick layer of paint that you get when actually using paint and a brush. So for this one, this is just a little laundry bag. I am going to hand letter it with a paintbrush and paint. So for this one, I have chosen fabric paint because it is going to get washed. If you are not washing the fabric that you're lettering on, you can totally use a multi-surface acrylic paint. So if it's for home decor, like a wall hanging, I would choose the multi-surface acrylic paint over the fabric paint. If it's something that's gonna get washed, fabric paint is definitely the way to go. Really, that's because of cost. But you can get this fabric paint that is by Tulip and it's soft instead of the shiny fabric paint or the puffy paint or anything like that. It's really great, it looks beautiful, and it has the look of actual paint on fabric as opposed to that shiny fabric paint that you are definitely thinking about. The plus side to lettering with your paintbrush as opposed to a paint marker or any other method is that you can get that brush lettered look. You just do need to go over and fill in the strokes because your paintbrush won't carry enough paint to give you true brush lettering, but it definitely helps you get the shape of the thick down strokes, thin up strokes, if you use a round brush as you are lettering on fabric. All right, so for this next method, I am going to use my favorite way to paint large scale pieces of fabric, but I wanted to show you that you can just draw on your fabric with a pencil for your outline and you can erase anything that doesn't get painted over that will get like a little bit of a shadow but not much at all it definitely isn't really noticeable so my favorite way to paint large scale pieces of fabric or fabric that is really textured is by putting a pointed cap right on your paint bottle and using it to draw your letters this doesn't give a beautiful finish right off the bat so I paint out over top of it, but you can see that you're able to letter smoothly and get the whole script word done in one pass. And then you can go back in with a paintbrush and push that paint down into the fabric and smooth it out here. 
I am using a small flat paintbrush here. You could use a round paintbrush. I just find that a small flat paintbrush lets me get consistent line sizes as I'm going through and pushing the paint into the fabric. Now, if you wanted to get a brush lettered look with a thicker downstroke, you could just add a separate line with your squeeze bottle on the downstrokes so that when you're going in and pushing it in and filling it in with the paintbrush, that you've got enough paint to do that thicker stroke. Now, this fabric doesn't soak up too much paint, so I thought that I could get away with just one pass of the squeeze bottle hand lettering, but as I went through this quote, I realized I definitely wanted to do a second line of paint just right over top of the first, just to give enough paint to push it down and get really even coverage without having to go back in and touch it up. So you can see I'm doing that here. This is the same method that I used in my DIY hand lettering on felt. I really like this because it does not fray the felt. You know how if you rub felt, you get lots of fibers coming up and then it just looks messy. By using the squeeze bottle to lay the paint down, we're not dragging a paintbrush along the surface so you don't get that frayed, messy fiber look on your felt. I also use this same technique to hand letter on core mats, you know, the door mats that sit outside with the fun sayings. And I do have a video about that as well. Okay, so next we're gonna flip over that bag and I'm going to hand letter on the back of it as well. But first I did just want to talk about two different ways that you can use to get your hand letter design that's on paper onto the bag. So the way that I tend to use the most often is to take a photo of it and you can adjust the brightness until it's just black and white and upload it to Cricut Design Space and cut it out on my Cricut on iron on vinyl like I did with this one here. You can also hand letter on your iPad if you have an iPad Pro using Procreate. This is the way that I tend to do my hand lettering to fabric the most often lately because it is easy, it is clean and crisp every time and I have the tools to do that. Before I had the iPad Pro, I'd take a picture and upload it into my Cricut. And before I had a Cricut, I would hand letter on fabric with paint. So all of these ways definitely work. They're just a little bit different. All right, so another way to transfer it is to trace it. So there's two different ways I want to show you to trace it. The first is with a light box here. This is a Cricut Bright Pad. I don't believe that they make them anymore, but there's lots of light boxes on Amazon for like $20. They're definitely affordable. So just as if you are tracing on paper, you can put this light box and the letters that you want to trace underneath the fabric that you want to trace it on. So the light's going to shine through the design that you want to trace through the fabric so you can see the design really clearly. So you can see I'm doing that here. So I wanted to do this tracer as an example for you to show you the difference between uh, hand lettering with paint and paint marker and the difference in how thick or chunky it is just on the same fabric. But I started by hand lettering with paint and then I switched to a paint marker and that's where I messed up here. I chose a paint marker that didn't specify it was acrylic paint and it turns out it was oil paint. And you can see about halfway through here, I realize and I switched to an acrylic marker. So I just want to show you the difference. Oil paint totally bleeds into the fabric and does not give you crisp lines at all. So make sure if you're using a paint marker that you're choosing an acrylic one. Okay, the next method of tracing is elementary, if you will. So we used to do this in elementary school and I've done it a few times on my blog and I get lots of questions about it, which surprises me because like I said, I grew up doing this. So you just scribble pencil all over the back of your design and you make your own transfer paper. And then you flip it back over, you put it over top of your design, line it up where you want it to be, and then you trace over it firmly enough to transfer some of that pencil dust onto your fabric. So you can see I'm doing this here, and it is very faint. It is a little bit difficult to see, but that's great in the sense that you don't have many shadows to erase afterwards if you miss any spots. You can also get transfer paper from the craft store that you can just put between your design and the surface that you want to letter on. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, one of the more tricky parts about lettering on fabric is keeping it still and keeping all the wrinkles out. So typically I do iron my fabric. If I was doing a commission piece, I would definitely iron it first. And if you're doing a small enough piece, you could use an embroidery hoop just to hold the fabric taut. 
My grandma actually has an embroidery hoop with a hard center for painting on fabric. And so if you could get your hands on one of those, that would be a really great option as well. So you can see here, I'm struggling to find those pencil lines, but in the certain light, I can see them. And then I just traced over it loosely before I went back in and filled it in. Again, I am using a paint marker for this one. It's definitely the most convenient and easy way to letter on fabric, but I do think that the lettering with a paintbrush gives a better look, whether it's the squeeze bottle and then the paintbrush or just the paintbrush because of the thicker darkness of that paint. Like it really sits on top of the fabric. All right, so those are the different ways that I like to hand letter on fabric. And here they are up close. Like I said, my favorite look is definitely the actual paint on the fabric or the Cricut iron on for those crisp, clean lines, but that's not actually hand lettering on fabric, so I didn't go into that here. If you are interested in using your Cricut to transfer your hand lettering to fabric or to other materials, I do have a video all about using your own designs with your Cricut. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. We'll see you next time. I like the best and which ones I gravitate to and why. Oh, you can see.